Hey everyone, welcome to this video. I'm August from the Tracket team and today I'm going to introduce you to the CloudFront service from AWS. What its strong points are, how to use it and how it can help you to improve the performance of your project. Before getting started, let's take a look at when AWS CloudFront can be useful. Let's say you're hosting a website on a server in Paris. Let's say your site looks like this. It's an extremely basic site with a simple title and an image of a cat with glasses. The code isn't complicated, it's simply an index.html file with a jpg image. You can download both files in the description if you want to do the same. Now let's imagine that your website appeals to a lot of people all over the world. Argentinian, South African, Australian, anyone on the earth, and especially people a long way from Paris. Every time someone wants to access your site, your site with your cat will have to grow around the world to reach each and every one of your users. And even if a dozen or a hundred Australians want to access your site, your content will circle the globe as many times as you have customers for each one to reach them individually. So if your site is heavy as your cat image might be, it may take a long time to reach your customers and therefore have a long loading time, which is not optimal. When you look at this kind of diagram, you quickly realize that it might be worth trying to optimize it a little because a lot of ground is covered with the same data. And this is where AWS CloudFront and its point of presence come in. Point of presence are intermediate location between AWS region and the end user. In our case, we'll be taking mainly about edge location as they are the main point of presence where CloudFront store cache data. But there are other point of presence such as regional edge cache, which are located between edge location and origin servers. Edge location are therefore smaller data centers than the availability zones and are optimized for content delivery. CloudFront is a CDN or Content Delivery Network and this network is made up of all these point of presence. They are strategically located in a large number of cities around the world and they act as a reward point for content catching. So yes, we found the solution to our problem, catching content. When your users around the world want to access your content, they no longer ask directly to the Paris server, but to the edge location closest to them. CloudFront will then do a relatively simple job in the edge location. When a customer asks for content, it says to itself, do I already own this content? For a very fast user, the edge location data center doesn't own the content, so it will fetch it from a server in Paris. For this user, or at least for his first arrival on the site, the loading time is absolutely the same as before. However, thanks to this user, the content will remain caged in the edge location. So if another user requests your site, CloudFront in the edge location will ask the same question as before, do I already own this content? And this time, yes. He already owned it. It will then deliver it much faster because the distance to cover is much shorter. So for all the future users, loading time will be considerably reduced and the user experience greatly improved. And that's what CloudFront is all about. It can be used in a wide variety of ways and to give you a bit of vocabulary, the place where your website is stored, in your example, the server in Paris, is called the origin. And the origin could very well be an on-premise server, an S3 bucket, or an EC2 instance, the choice is yours. The diagram can be simplified in this way. On the one hand, we have the origin, which contains our website and our photo. The origin communicates with the edge location, which are much closer to our user with which they will communicate most of the time. Now you know what this service can be used for, let's see how to set it up. And that's what we're going to do right away, by setting up our origin with S3. To get started, go to the AWS console. If you haven't already done, creating an account is free, but you need to put in your card in case you go over the service free plant, which won't be the case for us today. The first thing we need to do is create an S3 bucket to us or super site. You can type S3 in the search bar and click on it. Once there, click on create bucket to create a bucket. The first field is for naming your bucket. You can call it anything you like, but I'm going to call it track it CloudFront. Nothing needs to be changed here. You can leave it as it is by default. You can even leave block all public access ticket. We'll see later that we'll still be able to authorize access to CloudFront. You can then leave everything as it is and press create bucket. The bucket has now been created and you can click on your new bucket. In the object tab, we are going to upload our files. So click on upload. To do this, we'll simply drag and drop our two files, our index.html and our image. Once you've done that, 
click on Upload. It will take a little time to load and once it's finished, you can click on Close. Our site is now on a S3 bucket, so the origin is partly configured. We'll come back to this later. We are now going to configure CrossFront to interact with our S3 bucket. I'm going to open a new tab and in the search bar, I look for CrossFront and click on it. As you can see, there's a free plan which will be large enough for this tutorial, so don't worry about that. And if you're interested, the price is indicated just below. You can now click on Create a CrossFront distribution the first thing we need to select is the origin of our CrowdFront distribution. If you go back to the diagram from earlier, this field is used to select which origin, in this case or S3 bucket, edge location should communicate with. In the Amazon S3 category, we will choose the Trackit CrowdFront bucket. A little further down in the origin access category, select the recommended origin access control settings. This will give CrowdFront access to what's in the bucket and nothing else. Next, you'll need to choose an origin access control, which I don't have at the moment, so you need to create one. Click on create new OAC. Here, all the default parameters are correct, so you don't need to change anything. Just click on create. As you can see, they tell us that we need to update our S3 bucket policy. This policy will have to authorize access to the CloudFront IM role. Fortunately, CloudFront will generate this policy for us, so we'll just have to copy and paste it into our S3 bucket. We'll see about that later. For now, you can go downstairs and leave the default setting checked. You'll need a to indicate whether or not you wish to activate the web application firewall or WAF. In our case, we'll try not to be too complicated and click on No. A little further down in default root object, you need to enter the name of our website root files, in our case, index.html. Once you've done that, scroll down and click on Create Distribution. And that's it. Our distribution has been correctly created. I think you'll remember that earlier we were told that we needed to update the policy for our S3 bucket. Things are looking pretty good because just below the message telling us that the distribution has been created, we are prompted to copy the policy for the S3 bucket. You can then click on the Copy Policy button and then go back to your S3 bucket and click on the tab Permission. Once on Permission, scroll down to Bucket Policy here you can click on edit and all you have to do is pass the policy you copied. As you can see, this policy will allow AWS CrowdFront service to get object from this S3 bucket. Basically, that's what this policy is for. You can scroll down and click save change to save this policy. The S3 bucket is now perfectly configured. We can now return to our CrowdFront distribution. At this point, you will certainly have received the message saying that the distribution has been correctly created. However, it's not impossible that below less modified it said deploying, as in my case. If this is the case for you, simply wait until a date is written, as this will mean that your service is online. Now that you've got a date below last modified, you can copy the domain name of the CloudFront distribution by clicking on the little copy icon next to it. And you can paste it in a new tab. And before accessing your site, I'll ask you to pay attention to how the image will happen. You see? The image arrive first the top and then the bottom. And now if I reload the page or if I close and reopen my site, you don't even notice that the image has been reloaded. It's quite possible that you won't see any difference if the origin server is very close to you. For example, if the origin is in Paris and you live in Paris, you won't necessarily see a big difference. And even if with small files like this, the difference isn't obvious, in my case, you can already see the impact of CloudFront. So roughly speaking, if we go back to our diagram, what happened? As soon as I press enter, AWS directed me to the edge location data center closest to me. CloudFront then did its job and asked itself if it already had the data I was interested in. So it asked the original S3 bucket to provide it with what I asked for. They communicate it to each other, edge location send it to me and catch the file. And now when I reload the page, the speed is almost instantaneous because I'm only communicate with the edge location closest to me. And now we will notice that the image no longer appears from top to bottom. CloudFront is optimized to work with other services and it's really well integrated. As you've seen, configuration is very easy with other AWS services such as S3, EC2, ELB, and Route 53. But it also works very well with any other service that isn't an AWS server. Now that you understood what AWS CloudFront is all about, let's get down to more complex features. With CloudFront, we 
have a notion of TTL or time to live. As you may have guessed, objects are not kept forever in the edge location cache. After a certain period of time, they are deleted and this period of time is called the TTL. The default TTL is one day, after which objects are deleted from the cache. You can also do this manually, remove an object from the cache before the TTL expires. However, doing this is not free and you will be charged for that. This can be useful if you want to deploy a new version of your application. You will then update the content in your origin, but before the TTL expires, your old application will still be in the edge location. And if your user asks for it, CrowdFont won't look in your origin for the new application because according to it, it already has it, so it doesn't need to. And if the new application is for a critical security purpose, then it may be worth manually deleting your application from the edge location before TTL expires so that the CrowdFront can update itself and deploy the new application without the security flow. CrowdFront technology can also be used with another service called S3 Transfer Acceleration. S3 Transfer Acceleration enables fast, easy and secure file transfer of a long distance between a user and an S3 bucket. And it's totally possible to use CrowdFront to accelerate the upload of a file to S3. To do that, it's quite simple. You upload your file to the edge location and once it's upload, it's sent to Amazon S3 via the AWS internal network. So it doesn't pass over the public internet, but directly through internal paths optimized and created by AWS for this purpose. To illustrate in a little more details what this could be used for, let's take a world map with our users all over the world, our edge location and an S3 bucket located in Paris. Now let's imagine that all our users want to put a file on our S3 bucket in Paris. And like earlier, instead of doing it directly from their location to Paris, which could take some time as our users are quite far from Paris, our users will upload their files to the CloudFront edge location, which will then transfer this file to the Paris-based S3 bucket using the very fast AWS network. And all this is a much faster way for our users to upload their file to their S3 bucket. From the example I've just given you, it's important to understand that edge location aren't just for delivering content, but also for uploading files. In other words, edge location aren't just for read-only. Your user won't just be reading content, they can also write on it. In other words, as we've just seen, your user can also upload files. It's a good thing to know and it can be very useful. If you have any question about how to set this up, or if you'd like to know more about how AWS CrowdFront or anything I've talked about in this video can help you contribute to helping your project, don't hesitate to contact Trackit. The team and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't hesitate to subscribe and if you have any question, remarks or if I've missed any points, don't hesitate to say in the comments. See you next time.